This is an Avatar HD 1S VTX. If you don't know what that is, it's a wireless digital video transmitter that sends the signal from this camera wirelessly over the ear to a set of FPV goggles or a ground station. Now, this specific module actually has a fault in that after about 30 seconds, the image freezes and you're no longer able to see any movement. Today we're going to take a look at this board under the thermal camera because I think it's overheating and we're going to be using this, the Infra P2 Pro, to do that. If you don't know what the P2 Pro is, it's a thermal camera that has a specific macro lens which is magnetic and removable that allows you to look closely at PCBs and it's ideal for electronic repair or inspection like we're going to do here today. Now this video has actually been sponsored by Infra and what we're going to show you is how you can use their thermal cameras to perform diagnostic and checks on damaged and faulty boards like this. Now Infrae make thermal cameras for both Android and iOS and they're available in USB-C and Lightning connections. Today we're going to concentrate on the P2 Pro which is a USB-C Android camera with a removable macro lens but you can also get this the T2 Plus which is the iOS based camera but it is available on Android as well and this one has a built-in manual focus lens so rather than removing the lens you can adjust it on the fly. Both of these cameras offer the same thermal features and they're available today as part of the Amazon Prime deal and there's links to them in the description if you're interested in getting one of these at a discount. Just to quickly show you this, you can see we have the thermal camera in the USB-C port at the bottom and you can see my hand underneath this showing you my fingers with the thermal image. This app allows you to do all sorts of things like take stills, record video and also change the colour palette on the camera and you have features such as white hot all the way through to red hot and all of the usual palettes that you would expect to find on a thermal camera. It will also show you temperatures up in the corner and there are some advanced features which we're not going to cover in this video that allow you to do temperature measurement in various places on the screen, high and lows and all of the kind of features you'd expect to find on a thermal unit. Now just to demonstrate what actually happens with this VTX, we've got it all powered on. In the top left corner you will see the video showing and now you can see that it was working and now it is suddenly disconnected and it is all gone and at that point the VTX has just overheated and shut down. There is a cooling fan here running over this as you can see here but again it just stops working and no longer provides a video output and the only way to get it working again is to shut it down so turn the power off wait a few seconds power it back on and then if i'm lucky it will reconnect sometimes i've got to leave it though one or two minutes before it will kick in every time it will show the led that will work absolutely fine and now you can see that is kicked back in however what it then does is just lock up again either freeze the image or completely black out and it definitely seems to be related to heat and that's why we're going to take a look at it under the thermal camera okay now to demo this on the thermal we currently have the vtx powered down you can see it on the display we do have that macro lens fitted so if i take that macro lens off a minute you can see things look a lot better but if i put the macro lens on it now looks a bit blurred but that's because we need to get in closer and when we get in closer you can then start to see the individual components now what we're going to do is power the vtx up We'll go in close and then you will start to see the components on the board warm up. We can see the main IC is beginning to get hot. We can see that power regulator there is showing some heat as well. And if we move along, we can see the individual components on the board if we move up there as well. And again, we can now start to see what is actually generating the heat on this board. You can now see in the corner that the video is live. If I move my hand, you can see it moving around. But again, what we're looking for on this board is what happens when the video freezes. There we go. We've now froze. And if we now look at the board, I just want to see what exactly seems to be getting hot. The main chipset obviously is. And then there's a lot of heat up there on the board. But there doesn't appear to be a single component overheating. Okay, so now we're looking at the other side of the board. And what we're going to do is power the VTX back up again. We're going to see now what components start getting hot. We're just going closer so we can now start to see the individual components. Boom, we can see that chipset there got hot. That is our 
RF output amplifier there. You can see red. Our images come back on on the screen, just moving up to here. Majority of the heat on this board is down here around that RF power amplifier. We still have the live feed at the moment, so everything is still working as expected. And boom, it's just frozen again. And we've completely lost our video output. So again, if we just have a look around the board. At what is getting hot? There's nothing getting very, very hot. Now, I've just changed the colour palette to this red hot mode, which shows us nicely what is getting hot on the board. Again, it's that RF power amplifier there. We've got some heat on that DiviMath chipset. The memory I see up here is nice and cold, some heat around the components, but really nothing dramatic. The majority of the heat is clearly down here on the IC there. Flipping the board back to the other side, we can just have another look. And again, what's really nice about this thermal is we can see that dialog IC details. So we can actually read the details off that in this mode. We can then just have a look around. Not a lot to see under the IC. However, we can look around the components and we can clearly see the areas that are getting hot, but there's nothing that is very specifically overheating. And I think the issue I've got here is more than likely with a faulty component rather than anything shorting. Okay, so the conclusion on this one is there's nothing specifically overheating, unfortunately, and I'm going to have to do some more diagnostics to try and understand what is going on. Now, as I said at the start, this video was actually sponsored by Infrared to show you how you can use their thermal cameras to be able to do things like diagnostics on boards. I actually bought my P2 Pro myself with my own money, but after I reviewed that, Infrared reached out and also sent me this, which is their T2, and I really do like their thermal cameras for both board diagnostics, but general use as well. I have videos on both of these cameras if you're interested in seeing them and they are available to purchase as well and there's links to that in the description. They're also available though on Amazon Prime Day as well and there are some specific links for that in the description of this video as well if you're interested in getting one. Now that's it from me on this one. Please do let me know what you think in the comments section. Please do keep an eye out on the channel. We'll put another video on this VTX soon. Stay safe and I will see you all again soon.